Welcome. My name is Jason. I'm also known as Zorn on the Fantasy Grounds 2 forums. And this is going to be a tutorial on how to use Parse, uh, the utility written by Dr. Zeus, to make library modules for Fantasy Grounds 2. We're going to jump right in here. Uh, first, the tools that I'll be using as we're doing this. Uh, on the left, I have, uh, I'm using PDF Exchange. You can use any PDF viewer you want. I've got the Parse user guide up. I've got the D&D DM basic rules and the D&D players basic rules, which is what we're going to be parsing out of. Uh, on the right, I have the parse window, uh, so we can actually do all of our parsing. I also will have Fantasy Grounds up, which I'll use to look at our module that we're creating as we refresh it. Uh, I'm using Notepad++ as my text editing uh, utility. You can use it whatever you want. I prefer this one. Uh, I also use Show Symbol to make sure that all characters are showing. Uh, it's very nice for seeing line breaks. Um, the last thing I've got is I have the actual file folder where we will be storing everything. Uh, I'm using uh, Parse right off of my C drive. You can see these are all of my other books I've created and we'll be making our own module uh, in this tutorial. The last thing I use, which I just want to point out, is called Auto Hotkey. Uh, that's Auto Hotkey. It's a script program that lets me uh, assign hotkeys. Um, I have it set up to like if I hit numpad zero, it'll take whatever I've highlighted, copy it to the clipboard, replace all the carriage returns with spaces, and then paste it back, which means it removes all the line breaks very quickly. And I have it set to do, uh, as you can see, all kinds of things. Anyone who uses auto hotkey, there's a look at the script that I use. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, our first step now, we need to configure parse so that it's ready to start parsing our modules. So we're gonna dive right in. The first thing we'll do is set a module name. I'm gonna call this one PHBBR for basic rules and tutorial since this is gonna be our module. It's asking for the module type. GM only is pretty obvious, GM player is pretty obvious. Common is if you want it to force load whenever someone connects. So I just want GM player as this is gonna be a player's handbook. Uh, for the category, you can put whatever you want. Um, I'm going to call this core rule book, which is what I'll call all of them, so it groups them together. And for the module ID, this can be anything alphanumeric. Uh, I tend to just put the initials of whatever I'm making so that it stays unique, so PHBBRT. Uh, for my rule set, this is going to be 5E. And for my module source path, let's go ahead and set that. Uh, C drive, parse. And I've actually already got a folder built, PHBBR tutorial. So, got that built. For my thumbnail, I don't actually have a thumbnail made for this yet. So let me grab my thumbnail from my copy of this. Copy, paste, and try that again. There's my thumbnail. Okay, for my temp path, um, I'm actually going to make a temp folder inside this. You, don't, you can use the same temp folder for all of your modules, but I tend to keep my temp folder inside whatever module I'm working on. And then your module path. Now you can make an output folder here, but because of the way I want to work with this, I'm going to actually have it export straight to Fantasy Grounds. And that's because I want to be able to refresh it anytime I make a change. So I'm going to go ahead and save how I have it configured right now, and I'm going to call this phbbrt.properties. If you don't put properties, it won't show up by default on, under these files of type uh, when you're trying to load one. Okay, so that's all set. Uh, let's go ahead and start making our first piece. Now, the way I like to tackle uh, making like a player's handbook is I like to just go down the categories and start checking them off uh, if they're going to be in the book. So the first one I'll be using would be backgrounds. So I want to check that I want to make a reference of backgrounds and I want to go find the backgrounds in my player's book. So let me scroll down the backgrounds real fast. Personality, backgrounds, Acolyte will be our first background. So what I'm going to need to do is pull up Notepad, and I've already got a new file ready. I need to save as, and this is going to go in C, Parse, Tutorial. I need to make a new folder, and it'll be called Input. And then inside here is where all my text files are going to go. So this one is called backgrounds.txt. You can always reference parse to see what it's supposed to be called. So backgrounds.txt. So this is really easy to start off. So I'm going to just highlight all my text here. 
and drop that in real quick. Copy that. I didn't look at that like that right. There. And there. Okay. Uh, backgrounds are very simple. There's very little markup that needs to be done. It's mostly just making sure it's formatted correctly. Um, so I want to take out all of these extra line breaks here, which I will be using my auto hotkey to do. If I hit numpad zero, it just removes them all. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, rip through this. Uh, and on the final video, I'm going to fast forward through this. <laughs> Okay, so uh, very quickly, uh, that's all done. I've got all that removed. First thing I usually do whenever I do any of these is I'll do a find replace, and I do space space is what I'm looking for, and I replace it with just a regular space. And that just removes any double spaces from the document because there shouldn't really be any in here. So now I've removed all my extra line breaks, and it's just time to go through the formatting. So looking at the user guide for uh, backgrounds, you can see there's very little markup required. Uh, all we have to do is put pound pound semicolon to show new background. It already expects this formatting, so nothing has to be done there. All you do is make sure that there's a line break uh, before and after all your tables, and I do. So we can go ahead and hit save, and I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, a second one. We'll go ahead and add criminal so that we can just see that two of them have shown up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this. <laughs> Okay, so that's all done. I'm just going to hit save so I don't lose any of my changes here. Um, now, on the criminal, there was one section I actually wanted to add a pound h colon, which a semicolon, which makes it a header text right there because it's before that table. But other than that, this is all good to go. So I'll hit save. We'll move over to parse. I got my backgrounds checked, and I'm going to hit parse. And you'll see that it parsed Acolyte and Criminal module finished successfully. So now um, I want to view this in Fantasy Grounds, but I actually have to reopen Fantasy Grounds because uh, this module had not been created uh, before I opened it. And then I'll show you how you can refresh it going forward. <laughs> So as you can see, I've got backgrounds. There's the acolyte, and if I scroll down, Shelter of the Faithful, there's my feature. If I come down here and I click on the table, mm -mm, the table didn't show up. Uh, I did that on purpose, so I can show everyone what's probably the most common mistake whenever you're making backgrounds. So um, first, let's jump over and fix that. So on parse, I need to, if I want tables to show up, I need to tell parse that I want tables to be parsed. But I need to go one step further. I need to actually create a tables file. It doesn't even matter if I use anything in it right now. I still have to have a file called tables.txt because when parse is trying to parse tables, it's looking for that file. So now I'll go ahead and reparse this. And it's built a module. And then this is the cool part about using having it export directly to Fantasy Grounds. If I close the book and I open it again, you'll notice tables are showing. It, uh, it refreshes the module. As long as the module was there, it'll just refresh it. So I can go to Acolyte and scroll down. Um, Shelter of the Faithful still works, but if I scroll down the rest of the way, now my tables are there. So uh, my tables that I can you know click a die and it'll roll and give me my result in, the, in chat. Um, and then we'll also check criminal. Looks like uh, everything looks good here. And tables are working for criminal. So that's all there is to backgrounds. For each one you want to add, you just do, just like on criminal here, you just do another pound pound semicolon and you're good to go. That's it for backgrounds. All right, the next section that we're gonna do for our player's handbook is, in my opinion, the hardest one to do, it's the most complicated, is class. So let's go ahead and check that I need to make class.txt. As you can see, I've got the cleric pulled up on the left already. 
So in Notepad, I need to make a new file, and we're going to save as class.txt. Okay, and again, you can always double check parse to see what name it's expecting. Um, so we're going to be fast forwarding through this as I get my cleric pasted in and all the line breaks removed. Now one thing you might notice is I decided to put the table right after the part that says quick build. That's because in the sample documents, that's how Dr. Zeus did it. And after seeing the way it formats, I prefer it too. It's that way the table appears right before class features, which is probably when you're going to want to reference the table. Okay, yeah, AutoHotKey really speeds up that process. So let's go ahead and uh, save our text. First you want to do is remove blank spaces, or double spaces from it. Got 209 of them, that'll be nice. All right, now we need to go ahead and start formatting this. So all classes will start with pound, pound, semicolon to say this is a new class. Uh, I'm then going to just put header text at the front, just make it look a little better. You do header text with pound h colon. Um, so let's just throw these in here real quick, uh, creating a cleric. For quick build, I don't want a full header text. So what I'm going to do instead is pound BP, which means paragraph bold. So until it hits a line feed, it'll be bold text. All right, now we've gotten to the table and this is uh, kind of big. So we're going to make a header for the table. And then um, when building a table, uh, it's always pound ts for table start, pound th for the header, followed by your various columns, etc. Then it's pound tr for each row, and then you'll have value 1, like that, and then tr, and you have to have the same number as the columns or it won't line up, and then once you're all done, you do te, okay? So that's the slow way to do it. The fast way to do it is um, to have a hotkey that does it for you. So I'm going to take and grab here, down to here, and when I hit 8 on my keypad, it does most of the work for me. So um, you'll notice it did table start, but I don't have a table header. That's because I want to build it on my own here. So table header is going to be level. And then it's proficiency bonus. I'm just going to call it bonus because this chart's going to get pretty big. And then features. And then I'm going to stop. And the reason I'm going to stop is uh, I actually got this from Zeus's, the way he built it. But I don't want the spell table to be in the same table because it's just going to be too big. So I'm going to copy that down there and we're going to finish up with this. So, you know, I've got level bonus features and I ended with a semicolon. When you're making tables, every line needs to end with a semicolon. Now you'll notice that my thing auto did it except for the last line, so I'll stick one there. And then every field needs to have semicolons between it. So what I'm going to do is if I press 2, it adds a semicolon. Okay, so what I have keypad 2 doing is it replaces all spaces in my selected text with semicolons instead. All right, now because of uh, I don't want all the spell information, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy my whole table, and then I'm going to paste it again, and then I'm going to remove what I don't want from up top. Okay, 
So that table's done. And now for the spells table, I want to actually do, uh, I want different headers. So let's go ahead and adjust that. I just want it to be level, um, cantrips. I don't need the word known in there. And then I want first through ninth for my slots, which I want to get my semicolons in there. It needs to end with a semicolon. So there's all my columns. And then I also want spell slots per level to be the header. So there we go. So now it has a header, table start, there's my columns. And now what I need to do is remove everything that I don't want showing here, which is all of the information except for a level and spell slots. All right, that's done. Now I know it probably looks hairy, but I promise it gets really easy when you've done it a couple times. Okay, so uh, class features is good to go. Let's go ahead and put a header on that. Uh, hit points, hit dice, all these are expected fields. They're all formatted correctly. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna make this into an actual list instead of those dots. So I'm gonna do LS to start, and then LI semicolon is a list item. And then uh, I will paste and get rid of that, paste, get rid of that, paste, get rid of that, paste, get rid of that. And don't forget LE to end your thing. All right, so now we've done all that. Now we're into the features of the class. And those are all done with an FE tag. And features are basically if every class, or if every character of this class gets the ability, you want that to be a feature. Okay, so uh, spell casting, and they get this at level one. So that's what I'm gonna mark down is level one after the semicolon. And that just helps it sort um, instead of alphabetically. So uh, that's all good to go. Um, part of spell casting is cantrips. These are all subheaders. So these, I'm just gonna put BP in them instead so that it just makes a bold paragraph. I mean, it just makes a bold header as opposed to uh, making a whole nother section, I mean a whole new feature. Uh, is it spell casting abilities next? Yeah. And then uh, spell save DC and it's supposed to be bold. So I'm just gonna put uh, B and slash B and brackets around it. So, um, okay, spell casting focus. All right, now we're on to our next feature, which is Divine Domain. And you get your Divine Domain at first level. And then you get more stuff at second, sixth, eighth, and seventeenth. Okay, done with that. Feature. Uh, nope, this is a BP for Domain Spells. That's just a subcategory. Channel Divinity is a whole new feature, which you get at second level. And at sixth level, it gets better. Whoops, see that? I missed the semicolon there. So two comes six. And channel divinity is actually a subcategory under it. Now it's, this turn undead, you might want to actually make it its own feature because all clerics get it. It's up to you. It's not how I do it. I just put it in under the main channel divinity. But, uh, you know, do it how you want. If you wanted it to be a feature by itself, then you do FE. So um, I'm not, I just want to be under Channel Divinity. They have enough stuff to link already on their character sheet. Ability score improvement is FE, another feature. You get it at 4th, 8th, 12th, 16th, and 19th. Destroy Undead, as I'm keeping up with my document on the other side, uh, is a feature that they get at 5th level. And on this one, I'm going to have a, uh, this will pop out, a, each one of these features is going to pop out another window if you click on it. So uh, in the in Fantasy Grounds. So what I want to do is go ahead and make this uh, just bold. And then I need to make a table here. So I'm going to highlight it. Hit my magic table maker. Table start. I'm going to change that to say table header. TH. And it'll be cleric level. Semicolon. Destroys undead of CR. Why I put so many periods in there? Semicolon on the end of it. Fifth, the one half or lower. Blah, 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 blah. Got to make sure I have a semicolon at the bottom one. And table end. 
But I got to remember, I've got to break up the actual values here. So, like so. There we go. So that'll format my table correctly. Uh, the next feature is divine intervention, which they get at 10th level. And, whoops, you got to watch that semicolon 10, and it gets better at 20. All right. Now, we are on to divine domains. This would be um, abilities. And abilities are things that is your specialization for the class. So uh, the first one we do is ABH, which is a header. It just makes a nice big category break. So I know now we're in the specializations. If I come down to life domain, I'm going to put AB colon. And that means make a new ability. And that this will pop out a new window that I can put features in. So uh, the first feature under life domain is going to be life domain spells. So let's go ahead and put... Um, actually, this will be part of the life domain. So I'm actually going to do this. It's just bold paragraph. And we're going to build a table here. So that would be 8 to get my table. Table start. I'm going to change that to be TH for table header. Cleric level. Oops. And spells. Did I do that up top? Yeah, destroys undead of CR. Okay. So cleric level. I really messed that up. And spells. Um, and then I need to make sure that I've got my category my columns broke up here and i need a semicolon on the end and i need te on the bottom of it i'm going to get a little fancy here and we're going to actually mark this text as italics using i and slash i in uh, like html style markup and that'll make those spells show up as italics okay so um the first uh ability here would be uh abf for an ability feature and that's a bonus proficiency and they get that at first level and they get now you could have done that with life domain spells as well by the way I could have marked that as an ability feature but I just have it as right off of life domain um, in fact let's change that let's do ABF and call that a feature so that it, it actually pops out to the side um, which means they get it at first third fifth seventh and ninth all right so um, Disciple of Life is the next one. They get that at first level. A ABF, Channel Divinity, Preserve Life. They get it second level. ABF, Blessed Healer. They get it sixth level. ABF, Divine Strike. They get it eighth level. And finally... ABF, Supreme Healing, they get it 17th level. We're done. This is completely parsed. So let's go ahead and save it. Let's pull up parse and parse this. You should see now Cleric is showing it parsed, and let's see how it turned out. So I'm going to close the book and open it back up to refresh the module. I've got classes showing. That's a good sign. There's Cleric. Looking good so far. Here comes the table. Looks like it's formatted correctly. Here comes the spell slots per level. Looks good. Okay. Our list showed correctly. Um, features. Yeah, we got our features showing up, and it's got different bold text in there. Um, how about the domains? So I've got life domain, and when I scroll down, you'll see all the features I get from that. Now, if you had more than one domain, each AB would cause another one to show up here. All right. So we're done with Cleric. So all we would do to add another one is, you know, Fighter was next. You do pound, pound, Fighter, and you'd start typing and put it in the same way. So congratulations, you've now put in your first class. Okay, so the next section that we want to parse for our player's handbook is going to be Equipment, which will be equipment.txt. I'm going to go ahead and check reference here, and we're going to jump over to Notepad. And let's make a new file and call it, well, save as equipment.txt. Now, equipment's um, actually pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. And so I, I'm, what I really want to do instead of doing the whole equipment table is just make sure you read this part I'm highlighting right here in the manual. Um, we're going to put in armor, okay? But there's different categories, adventuring gear, armor, weapon. But it, it's in red text all the way through the document showing which ones it's expecting. 
So we're going to do pound at symbol armor. This is our subcategory. Then it's going to expect a table header, um, and it requires these fields. You can tell because right here it says armor data must have six fields. So let's go ahead and put them in. Uh, armor, cost, AC, strength, stealth, weight. That should have been semicolons. Sorry. Armor, cost, AC, strength, stealth, weight. Okay, and they do not need semicolons on the end. Then you also need a subtable, and it tells you what subtables are allowed. Uh, in this case, it's light armor, subtable, medium armor, subtable, heavy armor, and subtable, shield. And it should be pretty obvious on the armor table why those are the subcategories. So uh, let's go ahead and drop these in here real fast. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, Satan's Game, your children. Now, um, you don't need TR like you do when you're normally doing a table, but otherwise you still need to have semicolons to separate everything out. So uh, let me go ahead and put that in. We'll fast forward through this like it or not, are attracted in their weaker years to the occult, and a game like D&D &D fuels their imagination and makes them feel special while drawing them deeper and deeper into the bowels of El Diablo. This afternoon, the Dead Ale Wives Watchtower invites you to sit in on an actual gaming session. Observe the previously unobserved... Okay, so we have our table built now. Uh, for the equipment table and let's go ahead and just test what it looks like real quick uh, If we go to parse and we have equipment checked, we'll say parse. You can see our armor showed up there. So let's um, hi refresh the table equipment armor and There's all of our armor table turned out perfect now if we open up shield you can see it's got all of its stats But I want to go ahead and add a description for some of these too Okay so the table's built, we can see it showing up, but we want to add descriptions. Um, in order to add a description, all you have to do is just uh, just put it below, or I mean, just put it in the, the description text below, and as long as what's before the period matches an item in your equipment list, it will uh, place that in the description of that item now. So let's get all of these in here real fast. Observable as a hidden camera takes you to the inner sanctum of Dungeons and Dragons. Gallstaff, you have entered the door to the north. You are now by yourself, standing in a dark room. The pungent stench of mill. Enter, save, and let's go ahead and parse this. And we should see our items are still there, but now they have description text. So we close that one, open that one. Equipment, armor, plate. Perfect. Got a beautiful description. You know, shield is recognized. So that is all there is to building your equipment. Um, but the only thing I want to draw attention to is whenever you're doing, like, weapons, pretty straightforward. When you're doing adventuring gear, everything indented, like, obviously, these go under subtable ammunition. Anything that is not indented should go under subtable standard. Okay? Uh, and if you look again, whoops, in the documentation, one of your subtables for adventuring gear is standard. So, anyways, uh, that's all there is to doing your equipment. Okay, the next section we're going to be working on is feats. Now, I know there are no feats in the Player's Handbook Basic Rules, but the regular Player's Handbook does, and you'll probably eventually be putting them in. So we're going to check feats, and let's go ahead and add that file, and save as feats.txt, and I'm just going to drop in a couple of the feats from my scan of the Player's Handbook, which it's not formatted great. You'll notice like all the words at the top. Luckily, if I push one, it removes all the spaces in a selection. So I had to overcome a lot of this. So uh, formatting, it's pretty simple. Uh, let me go ahead and get just get the line returns removed and all that stuff. Real. Do emanates from the wet dungeon wall. Where are the Cheetos? They're right next to you. I can't. Okay, that's done. So to mark it up, 
uh, we need pound pound semicolon to start a new one and then I need a list so list start list item paste paste and I need don't forget list end okay pound pound and now I'm gonna cheat and use my uh, numpad 7 which creates a list for me and puts the appropriate tags before and after the selection pound pound tab and here seven thank you da, 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 da. and charger now you can use pretty much uh, all the formatted tags that go in here um, all I'm gonna do now is hit save and let's go ahead and parse it and see how it turned out feats parse you'll notice it always does like one for every bullet point you have every paragraph you have it's, it's just how it works um, so let's go ahead and check fantasy grounds and see if my feats came up refresh feats there we go actor got all my stuff in it charger got all my stuff in it so looks great we are good to go with feats on to the next section Okay, so the next data item we want to parse is going to be races for our player's handbook. But we're skipping a few sections, so let's just take a quick look. Um, images I skipped. Um, images are very simple. You just make a new folder in your input folder called images. And any Fantasy Grounds 2 compatible image that you put in that folder, when parsed, will be included with the module and then can be referenced with uh, Z-Links that will get covered later. Uh, image pins allows you to pin story entries to images. Um, we're not going to cover that here. Magic items will be in the Dungeon Master's Guide, NPCs, Dungeon Master's Guide. Parcels is definitely for uh, making, making uh, treasure parcels for adventures. Pregens is definitely modules, and it's a, a little, little past the scope of this document. And races. So let's go ahead and check races now, and let's go ahead and get those built. So the race markup is very simple, but the only thing that really ha has anything is doing the traits. But uh, so I've got races. We're going to put the dwarf in. So let's start off by making my file. File save as races.txt. And let's grab the dwarf. It's the spell. In the fridge. Duh. Move. Let's go ahead and scroll back up to the top, and um, we're going to start off by putting some header text in here. Oh no, actually, we're going to start off by putting pound pound semicolon. That means new race dwarf. Okay, um, header text, long memory, long grudges, clans and king. Excuse me, clans and kingdoms. Um, God's Golden Clan, Slow to Trust, and then I want to use the tag BS here, which means bold sentence, so it'll be bold until it hits a period. Um, humans, and I actually want to do, I don't need a header for the Drugar, I'm just going to do a bold paragraph for that one. Um, I actually should have italic paragraph up here because that's that quote from the book. All right. So we scroll back down here. We have uh, dwarf names. And I get the same thing. I want these to be bold until they hit either a colon or a period. So the bold sentence. Dwarf traits. All right. First, you do pound exclamation point for a trait. So ability score increase. We're going to copy this because we're going to do a bunch of them. Age, alignment, size, speed, 
Dark Vision, Dwarven Resilience, Dwarven Combat Training, Tool Proficiency, Stone Cunning, Languages, Subrace. Even Subrace will get it. Um, because that is a trait. I want him to have to. All dwarves will pick a subrace. Now, for Hill Dwarf, I'll put Pound S, which means this is a subrace. So under subrace, it will pop up Hill Dwarf. And then inside Hill Dwarf, I again want traits, ability score, dwarven toughness. And then for Mountain Dwarf, I'll do S again. So that'll be the next subrace. like so. So we can save this and now let's parse our races and we should see Hill Dwarf, Mountain Dwarf, Dwarf. Good. So let's go look at our uh, table here, or our races. So open the book up, tutorial. Races are now showing. There's Dwarf. If you scroll down, there's all of our, tra our, our names. Here's all of our traits and each one of these will pop up. And then at the very bottom, there's subrace, which will give you two more subsections that have their subrace traits. Okay, so races is all done. That's all there is to it. Uh, when you want to add a ne the next race, then you guessed it, pound, pound, colon, elf. So that's all there is to it. Uh, let's move on to the next section. So the next data point is reference manual which we are going to touch on but that's going to be the last thing we do because it's kind of a putting it all together and that's how you make like a readable book in fantasy grounds that you can look through um, we're skipping quests that's obviously going to be for an adventure module and we're next is skills now you don't really need skills because all the skills are fixed in 5e but you can put them in so let's go ahead and do one real quick um, notepad new save as skills.txt and um, out here in this section uh, using each ability is where you can actually find these but what you do is first you do pound at symbol for the category so this will be strength right um, then you do pound pound for what the actual skill is going to be so in this case our skill is going to be athletics and then everything after it just goes on the next line so let's do that copy here paste remove that get my line breaks out now I'm obviously not going to do all of these I'm just going to do a couple real quick just so we can see how it should look uh, so let's make a list out of that again list start list item and list end okay then we're going to do dexterity whoops See, I messed up there. Pound at dexterity. Mostly so we can just prove that it is working. So the first dexterity skill is going to be acrobatics. Copy, paste that, and enter. Remove the line breaks. Done with that one. Let's put another one in. This will be sleight of hand. Copy, paste, remove line breaks, save. Okay, that's enough for us to go ahead and just see if this is working for us. So let's go to parse, parse our skills, and you'll notice our three skills showed up. So let's see how they're going to look for us in Fantasy Grounds. Refresh the module, and I've got skills, and you'll notice I've got uh, acrobatics, athletics, and sleight of hand. Okay, so the last section we're going to add for our player's handbook will be spells, which might seem very intimidating, but it's actually one of the easiest ones to enter, thankfully, because there's a whole lot of them. So first off, we're going to go ahead and check spells. Um, before I start, let's go ahead and get this made. Uh, new file, save as, spells.txt. Now, let's look over here on the right, left. Um, there's two sections. First, we do pound at symbol all by itself and that means this is the spell index block and that's where we're going to put in our index of spells now I'm going to just type these out so it'd be cleric spells cantrips 
zero level to exactly like it's in there and then I'm only gonna do like one spell for each one because we have a limited amount of time here so light first level uh, we'll put bless second level we'll put um, cure wounds in fact let's put two cantrips so we'll do guidance and we'll do light okay then when you're ready for wizard spells it's just a line break and just go right into it so wizard spells cantrips or whatever class you're putting in with the main with the actual player's handbook so we'll do acid splash we'll do uh, dancing lights and then for first level we'll do magic missile and for second level we'll do hold person okay now I'm ready to begin my spell description block pound pound block or semicolon enter now I start putting in my spell descriptions it's that simple and what it will do is any spell that's listed here it will try and match in the descriptions just like equipment does so let's jump down to these and I'm, I'm just gonna put all these spells in real fast and uh, Why are you casting magic missile? There's nothing to attack here. I, I'm attacking the darkness. So that's it. That's all you got to do. Uh, just make sure that your line breaks are correct. And for the at higher levels you do not need to make that bold it'll automatically be bold but anywhere else you want bold you will need to put it in so all I'm doing here is just making sure that my line breaks are correct um, usually it's the description and occasionally your components will need the line break put in so for the rest of them they typically don't exceed they typically don't go past one line anyway save all right, we're done. So spells, parse. You can see a bunch of spells showed up. We go here to Fantasy Grounds. Let's refresh our module. Spells, cleric. There's all my spells. There's the actual data for them. Wizard, magic missile, all right there. And of course, this can be drag and dropped on a character sheet, and then it'll parse it for effects and get your attack built. Um, that's it for spells, and that's it for our player's handbook. So next we're gonna look at making a DM guide that has magic items and creatures in it. Okay, now that we have pretty much all of the data items for the player's handbook done, let's look at doing our Dungeon Master's Guide. So uh, up at the top, I've already built this. So I've done DMG BR Tutorial. I've set it to a GM only module. Still core rulebook, but now the module ID is DMG BRT. Um, still 50 rule set. You'll notice I've moved the folder to DMGBR tutorial and I've got a thumbnail already. I'm using, uh, I haven't actually changed this yet, so I want the DMGBR tutorial temp folder and I'm still going to the same spot in my modules. Uh, I've unchecked all those things because now all I want is magic items. So uh, magic items are very, very easy. You can see on the left, that's all there is to it. So um, we'll go to notepad and I'm gonna do new File, save as, and I need to back up because I'm in the wrong folder right now. This is going to be DMG BR tutorial input magic items.txt. All right, so we will grab my first magic item, which is going to be plus one weapon, or er, plus one armor, plus one weapon, and amulet of health. <laughs> Guys, you attack the darkness. There's an elf in front of you. Whoa! That's me, right? He's wearing a, 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 a brown tunic, and he has gray hair and blue eyes. No, I don't. I have gray eyes. Let me see that cheek. Well, it says I have, well, it says I have blue, but I decided I want to gray eyes. Whatever. All that's done. Let's go ahead and hit save. You may notice I haven't done any markup. That's because that's how easy magic items are. You just put them in, and uh, really, you add italics if you're wanting italics in there. Um, Wondrous item uncommon will automatically uh, be italicized for you. You don't need to do that. So uh, I've saved it. Let's go ahead and parse this. Parse. You see I've got uh, four items that I put in all showed up. Now, we're going to have to close 
Fantasy Grounds and reopen it. Hey, you guys can talk to each other now if you want. Hello. Hello. I am... Library. Modules. Come down here. We've got the DMG BR tutorial. Grab this one. Magic items. There's my plus one armor. There's my amulet of health. There's my bag of holding. That's all there is to magic items. That simple. All right. One more thing we need to look at, and that's NPCs. Uh, let's get to that. Okay. This will be the last section for the DMG. Uh, we're going to do NPCs. And we're going to do this in three stages. First, we're going to put some NPCs in. Then we're going to add generic tokens, just letter tokens, and they'll auto assign. And then we're going to add specific tokens and have those auto assign. So uh, first off, let's go ahead and jump in and make our file. New file, save as npcs.txt. OK. Um, so as you can see looking here, the only markup that's required is this pound pound semicolon before descriptive text. That's it. So let's jump in here and I want to put a uh, bugbear. Call staff, sorcerer of light. Then how come you had to cast magic missiles? <laughs> <laughs> format these real quick. Um, something to be pointed out. Um, for the most part, these will all just need line breaks taken out. Abilities. They can either be on separate lines or they can be in one continuous line. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Uh, I like them on consecutive lines, but either way will parse correctly. Here you'll see I put pound pound semicolon and that's my descriptive text. You don't have to use descriptive text. If you leave that out, um, like, and you don't have any description, you just start another monster, it just takes the next line break as the start of a new creature. Okay, and that's it. We're built. So, let's save that. Go to parse. That's how quick it is to put NPCs in. So, parse. You see I have my four creatures all parse. Now we'll go over to Fantasy Grounds and let's refresh my book. Here, NPCs, alphabetical. I've got a bugbear. I've got a goblin. I've got a hobgoblin. Notice all the stats are there. Everything's ready to go. Damage rolls. Beautiful. And my ogre. So NPCs and spells, the two things you probably want a library module for the most are the easiest things to do with parse. All right. Now I said we were going to do this in stages. So next, I want to add some tokens. So let's go ahead and check tokens here. And we're going to go over to our folder. And I'm going to say new folder, tokens. And in there, I want to put some generic tokens. OK, these are just letter tokens. All right. So let's try parsing again and see what happens. You'll notice it recognized the tokens and it assigned those tokens based on the first letter of the monster. And parse will do that. If you don't have a token for a creature, but there's a letter token, it will automatically assign that for the first letter of the creature. So let's see how that looks here. We'll parse there. We're going to need our combat tracker. Here, NPCs, alphabetical. Uh, let's, yeah, let's get them out of here. Okay, let's drop a bugbear in. He's got a B. Let's drop a goblin in. He's got a G. Hobgoblin's got an H, and the ogre's got an O. Beautiful, right? Uh, menu, delete, all. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add specific tokens. So now I've added some specific tokens in. The way it works is if a creature's, it, to make their name lowercase and take out spaces. If there are any non alphanumeric characters, replace it with an underscore. So bugbear stays the same. Evil Mage would be Evil Mage one word. Um, Hell's Minion would be H-E-L-L -L underscore instead of an apostrophe S Minion. And that's how it matches up the tokens. But uh, so let's go ahead and parse it one more time. And you see it's still got the letter tokens, but you got the other ones. And it assigned each of them its own token. So when we come here and I get to there, refresh. NPCs, alphabetical, let's get that out of the way. 
The bugbear has his own token, the goblin has his own token, the hobgoblin has his own token, and the ogre has his own token. Is that beautiful or what? Okay, so that is putting in NPCs as well as assigning tokens to them. Um, you are set to build both of your library modules for the Player's Handbook and the DM Guide, but I'm going to give a, just a... There are, there are seven ogres surrounding you. How could they surround us? I had Morton Kaiden's magical watchdog cast. No, you didn't. I'm getting drunk! Are there any girls there? I totally did! You asked me if I wanted any equipment before this adventure, and I said no, but I need material...